Hello, Lighting Industry. I'm Jim Hutchison with Chauvet Professional, and this is Lighting Insights. Now we're jumping back on the pallet making train for this month's video, but we're grabbing onto a fast moving freight car. So let's get busy. Let's talk beam pallets. Ostensibly, a beam pallet is anything that's not a color, a focus position, or a control command parameter. This includes gobos, gobo rotation, and all of those variables, prisms, optical focus, zoom, iris, and any cool stuff your fixture does, like beam splitting, frost, diffusion media, effects rolls inside of the fixture, you know, all that stuff. I told you it's a pretty fast moving train, hang on. It's best to break this stuff down into its individual components for collective sanity, so let's do just that. Think of a gobo in a fixture. You want to see the gobo, so that means it needs to be given some kind of correct optical focus. Maybe you want to use that gobo a little out of focus in some places as a system, maybe a nice stippled breakup wash. Maybe you also want to have a sharply focused version of that gobo rotating counter-dependently to its brother and sister fixtures. Well, it's the best way to accomplish all these things is to make pallets for every single one of those things you want to accomplish to accomplish it in a hurry. Okay, first things first, know what your fixture is capable of doing. I'm using some Legend 330 SR spots from Chauvet Professional, for example, and they have several variables that are great for writing pallets. A rotating gobo wheel that I'll need to write some pallets for, a static and indexing gobo wheel that I'll need to write some pallets for, motorized zoom, iris, and focus, all that will need some pre-programming pallet work, and of course, color mixing and color wheel in the fixture. We did go over color pallets last time, but a good pro tip for writing beam pallets is that you can have some color in your beam pallets for those times where you might need that. We'll get on that a little bit more shortly. Now think of gobos. How do you want to see them? You definitely want them sharp at certain points, so it's an excellent idea to write a pallet for each of the gobos on each wheel in a sharp focus. I typically have a sharp focus, a widely out of focus focus, a medium range focus that works for the stippled breakup looks too. Don't discount focuses other than sharp. Make sure you record them. Just out of focus breakup gobos make excellent looks for pretty much anything from TV to theater, so don't always dismiss them. Also, some gobos look excellent on the ground or in the air as an aerial look, so make sure to test that. You may have to have a special focus or two for those gobos that look better in one place than the other, be it on the ground or as a shaft of light through the air. Rotating gobos also rotate, funny enough, so which way do you want them to rotate? How fast, too? All of that stuff is important to making a pallet to reference. Gobos rotating clockwise, gobos rotating counterclockwise, Gobos rotating clockwise slow, clockwise medium, and clockwise fast. Gobos rotating counterclockwise slow, counterclockwise medium, and counterclockwise fast too. A pretty good amount of lighting fixtures also have a steel fixed wheel that doesn't rotate the gobos individually, but as a plate if you will. These make excellent looks through the haze in any venue when they're scrolling, so let's write some pallets for these too. A clockwise slow, a clockwise medium, a clockwise fast, and of course a counterclockwise slow, counterclockwise medium, and counterclockwise fast. Now make sure to label, label, label as you go because labeling pallets you could have labeled six hours ago when you could be sleeping now can be pretty tedious. But to each their own, do what works best for your brain and for your timing. So we have gobos on both wheels, each of those gobos focuses, and any rotation. Now some pro tips. Be sure to record the open position on both of your wheels. You will definitely need the open beam at some point, and you'll need a reference point to make that happen. Also make sure to record stop values for any rotating or scrolling gobo wheels. You're not always gonna need to have your gobo spinning, so make sure that you'll be able to stop them from doing so. Zoom and iris are fairly straightforward though, although you never know how many stops in between each level of zoom and iris that you'll need until you're in the situation that you need them, so be prepared as you feel you need to be. I like to record four steps of each. Iris all the way open, iris all the way closed, and two steps in between open and all closed. Zoom is the same for me. I like to zoom in, all the way out, and two steps in between that give me some freedom to have varying beam widths. Make sure you're labeling all of your pallets so that you can look instantly at each and know what it is that you need. Each console has varying abilities and levels to do this, so make sure that you know what your desk can do to help you be quicker. 
Now prisms are another awesome parameter to write a handful of palettes to use, and the number of prism sets that your unit has will determine the number of palettes that you need. A Legend 330SR spot, for example, has one three facet rotating prism, so I want six palettes. Clockwise slow, clockwise medium, clockwise fast, and of course counterclockwise slow, counterclockwise medium, and counterclockwise fast. Easy, quick, ready to go. That's prisms. Now with respect to color and other parameters outside of beam parameters, there's nothing that says you shouldn't merge parameters together into different palettes. It's just how much control you want over the bits of the palette. What I mean by this is that if you know you're using a gobo on wheel two in split red blue every single time, why not add the color to the beam palette? It's gonna save you time and not having to access the color palettes, but make sure you give yourself an exit palette too in case you need that gobo without the split color parameter. It's all what works for you. I use plenty of combo palettes, but I know myself as a designer and I know what I want. It takes time. Now enough for me out of this episode. I'm Jim Hutchison for Showy Professional. Thanks for watching everybody. For more tutorial information and pro tips, check out our Lighting Insights series at lightinginsights.chauvetproblog.com.